Oh. See? Still an absolutely amazing animal. Feels like she weighs about. Hey guys, real quick before we get into this video, I did want to let you guys know that I did turn on memberships for this channel. So right at the bottom of this video, there should be a little join button. There's three different levels. Each level gets you something really cool. Everyone gets access to a monthly live stream where I can do Q&A, just talk about what's going on in my life. You'll get access to all sorts of exclusive content. So I'd really appreciate it if you guys would check that out. Also, just while we're here, hit that like button, subscribe, leave a comment. I would really appreciate it. You guys rock. Let's get into the video. Hi uh, guys, my name is Andy Gabs, and today I'm at Animal Adventure here in Bolton, Massachusetts, and I'm gonna give you guys a behind the scenes look at what they do here today and some of the awesome animals that they have. So this place has everything from primates, kangaroos, there's some lemurs in this cage, and we're gonna walk through and see all kinds of different animals today. They also have alligators, I believe you guys have caiman as well. Yeah, caiman, croc, two species of crocodiles. Two species of crocodiles, and this is Ed, the owner of Animal Adventures here in doing? Bolton, Massachusetts. So we're gonna walk around, show you guys all kinds of different animals and what they have here. I think we're about to go see some sort of primate now. Yeah, Josie, an African vervet monkey. African vervet monkey. Getting some dirty socks to play with. Dirty socks, first thing on the trip. <laughs> Greedy? Investigating. Now we're going in with an animal that I have a little bit of history with. If you've been watching my channel for any amount of time, you've probably seen some of my emu interactions. Normally I don't get along with emus, um, but we're gonna give this one a shot. Maybe it'll be different. I don't have the dead cat on my microphone, which is usually what they go for. We're about to go in with Urkel the emu. So this is Mr. Urkel. Do they grow like chickens do, how they're a tiny little baby they one day fast. and then they're yeah. massive? Not like... quite as fast as, uh, as especially poultry chickens or yeah. like, or uh, Peking ducks that grow super fast. Yep. But yeah, fast. You have them, you know, the, the cute chick stage is very short. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? All right, let's say hi. This is already a hundred times different than any emu experience I have ever had. Uh, no matter where I am when I go in with an emu, for some reason, we just don't get along great. And you can see this guy is completely chilling. He feels very interesting too. I can't really explain it. Almost feels more like a fur than it does feathers, like kind of a bristly fur, um, where his neck is also super soft. You can see he's just chilling. I think he actually likes the attention. Oh, he does. He'll fall asleep right on your lap, as you can see. Can I put your head down? You gonna be mad? <laughs> Where do you want your head to go? <laughs> Are you asleep? Yeah, you're fine. So interacting with an emu that actually liked me was pretty amazing. Um, definitely a very cool animal that I would like to interact with again. Now we are going to go see a sloth. Is it a two-toed? A two-toed sloth. Yeah. We are going to go check out a two-toed sloth. I'm about to head in and feed Sid uh, the two-toed sloth. Of course, the name is Sid. If you know what that is from, good for you. And if you don't know what that is from, please catch up on your Disney movies. A dandelion. Disney? That's Disney, right? Um, Pixar? Whatever. Maybe not Disney, Pixar, whatever it is. Is this guy particular on where he likes to be petted and not petted? Um, he's not super... Fond of the head. I'm yeah, head. fond of being petted. <laughs> a lot of you guys know Brian has a two-toed sloth as well. Um, his two-toed sloth's name is escaping me right now. The same exact species of sloth. They look like they're... Roughly similar in size too, and I think Brian's actually gonna add another one once the aquarium opens. Always thought sloths were cool. I've actually never gotten to interact with a bigger one like this. Every time that I've seen a two-toed sloth, they were very, very small um, at the place in Louisiana that I did a couple videos at. But still super cool animals, and um, a lot of people think that sloths move extremely, extremely slow, and from everything that I've seen, they can actually go decently fast. I mean, yeah. for a sloth, they're yeah. not it'll sprinting. It'll surprise you. I've had them come at me five or six feet away. They get there pretty quick. Yeah. Definitely like to sleep though. These guys sleep for like 16 to 18 hours a day, somewhere right around there. What do you think of the uh, giant sloth? Have you ever heard the rumors of the giant sloth down in South America? I that they're still around? Yeah. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard the rumors. That would be awesome. That would you be know? very, very cool. I just watched a uh, Joe Rogan podcast where he had an animal biologist an animal biologist on and they were talking about the fact that those guys might still exist. So hopefully one day they'll actually find one and we'll see him because they're allegedly the size of grizzly bears but in sloth format, which I don't know if my brain can't really even compute what that would look like, uh, but it would still be pretty cool regardless. They look amazing. They yeah, <laughs> very cool. So awesome. Two-toed sloth, super cool. Again, I had never gotten to interact with one that big. Um, it was very sweet. All he really wanted to do was eat, but they actually have an adult Asian water monitor right here, and as you guys know, I have Pickles, my albino Asian water monitor. Um, I don't think I'm actually gonna get in with this guy, but I think we're gonna feed him. They have a little hole that they give him food through, so you'll see how fast one of these big Asian water monitors can move. Though this guy's not an albino, still pretty decent sized. It's obviously a little difficult to tell how big he 
he is through the glass, but I'll get you guys a better view in just a second. So Ed is actually gonna whistle right now. They have this Asian water monitor kind of trained. When he hears the whistle, he'll come over to a little hole that they have in the enclosure where they will stick his feeders through and feed him. So we're gonna see if we can get him to whistle and come on over. So you can see him whistling right now. And here he comes, just like that. He came right over because he knows that he's about to get some snacks. There you go, okay. bud. I'm definitely gonna have to start working on whistle training pickles, because uh, if I can get him to come over when I whistle, that would make my life way more convenient, and that's kind of just a cool trick to show people. Uh, I'm not 100% sure what I'm gonna show you guys next, but I will get with Ed, we'll pick an animal, and uh, show you guys what they have to offer. And I would say one of the worst animals for most people to own, because they're so shy, they like the dark, they don't like to be messed with a lot, so it's one of those animals that are so absolutely adorable. When I was a little kid, I wanted a fennec fox so bad. So being in with a group of fennec foxes and pale foxes is pretty cool for me. Again, I'm for people owning exotic animals. However, you really want to do your research because what I find with most people that call us to take in their, their animals is that they, they want, what they actually want is a fox that acts like a dog. Yeah. Right? It's not gonna happen. Yes. Just get a cool dog. I have dogs yep. that treat like dogs and foxes that we treat. Like yeah. You can see he's an absolutely adorable little dude being mistakenly identified for a fennec fox, which, I mean, you could tell I showed you the pale and the fennec. They look very, very similar, so I can see how that issue came up, but still an absolutely amazing animal to have inside the U.S. now. Last time I was here, I did get to see the owls from outside of the cage, but we didn't get to go in, so today we are actually about to go in with some Eurasian eagle owls. These are pretty dang big birds. Uh, I do love birds. I really want to get a scarlet macaw someday soon. Also just because my daughter's name is Scarlet, I showed her one. Now she's committed to getting one, so we just got to convince Kelsey. This will be my first time ever holding an owl, specifically a Eurasian eagle owl. And when you come to this place, you can see all of these animals. They do tours and you can come and interact with some of the animals, maybe not all of them. So I'll be sure to leave the links to all of their stuff down in the description below, as well as the pinned comment. So please check them out, give them a follow. If you're in the Massachusetts area, even if you're coming here to visit, I highly recommend you come check this place out because it is amazing. We have an owl training class that runs about 90 minutes. If you come to one of our classes, you're gonna learn a lot, and by the end of that class, you not only be able to pet an owl, but we're gonna teach you how to professionally hold an owl. What we're gonna to do today, due to Andy's background and time, we're gonna take that 90 minutes, shrink it down to about uh, 90 seconds, and Andy's gonna hold an owl. I wish I was recording that, he just flew right over my head. Very vocal, his name is Obadiah, it's breeding season, so his wife-to-be, they were together for a while, he wants kids, she doesn't. So we had to separate him because she can actually eat him. But no, oh. in the owl world, no really means no. Yeah, fair you enough. Know? And I'll pick him up and we'll try to fly, it's all fine. And with him, he's well trained, so you just, you don't pull back, you just go with it. Yep. And then he'll put himself back up. Your thumb faces up, you hold the gestures. I'm gonna let go, that's the transfer. All right. Keep your thumb facing up, and I'm gonna, when he tries to fly, don't let him go. Okay, cool. If you let go of one gesture, you have to let go of both. Gotcha. Okay, I'm gonna pull him a little tighter. Okay. Okay, here's yours. Got him. Okay. Yep, just turn your wrist, and he'll go, yep, yeah, he'll go right. There you go. All right, buddy. I think we hit our 90 second mark, if not beat it. Yeah, that was pretty um, impressive. And so there's Andy already holding your Asian Eagle uh -huh. Owl. Wow, he's a lot heavier than I expected him to be. Um, obviously, he's a big bird, but I just didn't really expect him to be as heavy as he is. Yeah, I think he's about the same weight as the camera from holding him. I'm so used to holding the camera out like this, it kind of feels the same, but different with my left hand. Uh, very, very beautiful bird. I'm assuming he does not like to be pet. Uh, he's, uh, he's fine. Oh, is he? Yep. Hi, buddy. He'll, he'll nip you if he doesn't want you to. Hi, either. buddy. Oh, wow, he's so and soft. Just for comparison, we don't have to do spend long. Most people don't touch the female because she's called the beast for a reason. Okay. But I think just because of the weight, you have to see the difference. Okay, yeah, He's sure. probably around six pounds, and she's been weighted over 10 at times. Oh, wow. Mm. He feels so much heavier than six pounds. That's crazy. Wow, absolutely beautiful bird. And then if I wanted to let him so fly I'm, yep, back in. So watch my wrist. Yep. So what you want to do is actually come this way some. Okay. Yep, that's fine. Sorry, that's I perfect. Felt he was gonna take off, no, that's so I perfect. just let go. Yeah, if, he, if he's already starting to fly and you just let go, that's perfect. Okay. Sometimes he gets comfortable and you have roll your wrist and he Oh, goes. kind of do like one yeah. of those. Gotcha. That's okay. perfect. Cool. Well, all right. Now we're gonna check out the female. Wow, you can tell she's definitely bigger. She's what you call an unmanned bird, which means we trained her every day. Some animals just are like, I don't care. I'm gonna make you look like an idiot no matter what you do. Yeah, fair so enough. So if you went to the wild and caught an owl, they'd probably behave better than this one. So she can lift 25 pounds? Yeah, when she was younger, I put a towel uh, around a barbell and uh, rolled it. She used to attack everything when she was younger and she yeah. picked it up and flew across the room with it. Oh, wow. So it was pretty cool. So this one's definitely a little bit more complicated than the male was, but we'll see if uh, we can get her out. And, yep, 
Lift that, her up. Yep, and then hold your thumb up, and the higher your hand is, the better she'll be. There you go. What's up, pretty girl? So I definitely agree. Significantly heavier, and what I noticed instantly when she grabbed onto me, <laughs> she actually grabbed onto the glove itself. You can feel it significantly more than you can with the male. I mean, obviously, you can see she is way bigger. She does seem a little bit more uh, skittish, maybe. Like, she kind of wants to take off, and that might be because I'm not holding my arm super steady because she is a heavy bird that I'm holding, you know, three and a half feet away from my body. So, though she's only 10 pounds, she feels like she weighs about 50 right now. So, oh, give her, gotcha. so then she'll have to open her wings for balance. Oh, that's very cool. So, you can see she's kind of pivoting all around to try to stay exactly where she wants to stay. Get her open up. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Wow. So, they have silent flight, but you can feel that, right? Yeah, that is crazy. Yeah. She pushes so much air. Yeah. Now wow. to release her, yep. you want to just give her a uh, give her a push and let go. Yep. All right, give her a push. And let go. Wow. So we've done a lot of cool things today. That might top my list as the coolest thing we've done so far. But let's see if we can beat it. So next up, we're going to take a look at an animal that I have some experience with, uh, but never this small. So this is a capybara. They're a kind of semi-aquatic rodent. Um, so they get really, really big, like the size of a. Okay, so over 100 pounds. They get really big, and this guy is absolutely tiny. Unfortunately, this one might have been taken from its mom a little bit too early. So they're actually bottle feeding it and raising it with a bottle. So I'm going to hand the camera over to Ed, and he's going to film me with this little tiny baby adorable guy. This is Humphrey the little baby capybara. Now it's hard to imagine how big these guys can actually get. I did say 100 pounds. This one might weigh like five, six pounds. He's trying to nurse off your finger. Yeah. There. Oh. See? He's hungry. He's so yep. cute though. Stop. They do have sharp little teeth though, even though he's so small. Oh yeah. Let's see if I can get you guys a good view of his teeth. I know, I'm sorry. Not bottle, bottle time bottle. yet, but so I'll probably give him one early. I don't know if you guys can see his teeth, but they have like, they almost look like big rat teeth. Yep. You can see, that's all he wants to do right now is nurse on my finger. I can actually feel, I didn't realize they had molars in the back too. Yeah, yeah. They... He's like kind of chewing on my nail right now. It's crazy to think that within a year, this guy is gonna be almost full grown adult size. For now, he's just a little tiny baby and wants nothing to do but get a bottle right now. As you can see, he thinks my uh, pinky finger is his bottle. So now we're actually gonna be giving Tabitha, who is a little baby red kangaroo, we're gonna be giving her a bottle. And how old is Tabitha? So she probably turned one around January 1st. We didn't get an exact birth date on her. Okay. And she wasn't. How ready. long do they take bottles for? Uh, she'll take a bottle up to two years. Oh, really? She's struggling with that for some reason. Yeah, knucklehead. Also very, very soft. So they grow pretty slow then, I would guess, Yeah, right? the females grow pretty slow. And she was raised in my house until uh, two weeks ago. We just moved her over here. Oh, so wow. she gets along. I have a little video I put up. Um, she gets along with our Rottweiler. I trained them both to come and sit next to me and take treats oh, out of so my hand. Funny. I think you might have gotten it all. Yep. You that's got it. it. Nice job, buddy. I'll give you guys a little close up of what this guy looks like. What do you think? You not sure about it? Oh, some nose kisses. Very cute. And is this this one's mom? No, so this is a neutered male we took. Oh, in. male. Okay. Um, and then we have the, we just built this little section for her here so they can see and smell each other through here with the hopes that we can get them together in our outdoor bigger enclosure. Oh, okay, and cool. Hi, bud. What's up, buddy? Thanks for watching. Peace.